And here to talk about it are, um, as I mentioned, Chuck O'Neill. He is the director at large of the Florida Rights of Nature Network. And um, our other guest is Thomas Lindsay. He is the co-founder co of the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund and the Center for, and I may have the name wrong, the Center for Legal and Environmental Rights. And I probably got that wrong, but if you're both here, it's great to have you on. And I just want to say thank you. And sorry for that rough intro. So Chuck, yeah, you, you were you were featured in this video that we did, the news package. And I just want to thank you, Chris, for being a part of that. And I guess just to kick things off, uh, explain more what's in this particular ballot initiative. Why was it important to get it on the ballot? And I guess what's the sense today in Florida for how, I guess, sorry, in Orange County for how things are going? Are there any initial results? Um, I guess, what's the, what's the sentiment in Orange County about this ballot initiative among those who are following it? Clean what? What it did, it was uh, not only a rights of nature initiative, but it was uh, rights, an empowerment of people to have the right to clean water. Um, we, we paired these two. The, the first one was we have a, a couple of iconic rivers in Orange County, the Wakaiva and Econ Lock Hatchie River. And that's what we started off with was to provide rights-based protections for these rivers. And through the committee process, the Charter Review Committee decided to expand those rights to all water bodies in Orange County. As uh, everyone would know who's been to Disney World uh, in Florida, um, we used to have pristine waters here. And what's happened over the course of time is they've degraded. So we gave Orange County voters uh, a choice in this election. Do they want rights-based protection? Do they want the highest form of protection for the waters? Or do they want to go with the existing status quo? And, and the, the reason you may see this uh, uh, glow on my face here is not only the uh, computer screen, but also my elation from the vote. The, uh, with 240 of 247 precincts recorded in Orange County, the total votes hey, Willie, for brother. the measure are 522,000 against 63,000. So 89% of the people have voted for this measure, Steve. Great. Well, yeah, thanks for the answer. And um, yeah, on to you, Thomas. Just, I want to just ask you a little bit more, I guess, the, the grander context. Uh, I, I feel, I'm guessing most people watching maybe aren't that familiar with the Rights to Nature movement, which you've been a key leader of for a long time now. And uh, sort of full disclosure for those who are watching, uh, Thomas's work and the group, the work that he did for the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund and now his ongoing work has been kind of a big inspiration for the way that I think about environmental issues, sort of, uh, and especially the way that I think about uh, regulatory agencies, which we can, we can talk about in a second. But I guess, you know, pushing that aside for a second, uh, you know, regulations versus rights of nature. Can you just talk about the importance of this particular ballot initiative and things like it passing in, in localities? What, why is it important? Why is it of national importance? Yeah, so I think people have been frustrated about conventional environmental regulations for a long time. And I think Florida is kind of a perfect storm for that conversation to take place because of what's happened to water quality across uh, Florida and the problems that Chuck mentioned. And I think it's a real watershed moment. I mean, literally <laughs> a watershed moment in Florida that uh, the 30th largest county in the United States uh, is voting on this initiative today uh, and that it was put on the ballot in the first place. So I think it's a kind of combination of, of different factors coming into play. One is that Florida is in the situation that it's in which means that state and federal regulators have really fallen down on the job. Uh, people who are told to trust the state and federal government on water protection issues are beginning to see through that kind of scam, uh, that the system is rigged uh, and that it's not taking care of those problems. So, you know, along with Floridians, people in other parts of the United States and around the world have come to similar conclusions. And starting back in 2006, a uh, very small community, not the size of Orange County, but a very small municipality in Pennsylvania, became the first in the world to adopt a rights of nature law. And the movement has really just gained steam since then. So 
Uh, I worked in Ecuador to help write uh, provisions, draft language for the new Ecuadorian constitution. They become the first uh, national constitution of the world to put rights of nature into the constitutional framework. But in essence, what we're talking about is civil rights for nature, that the existing system that we have, which is about regulating the destruction of nature, uh, is not sufficient to meet the needs of this generation, and that we need a civil rights movement, a human rights type movement for ecosystems. And I think that's, uh, that's the real watershed moment here is that Orange County, perhaps tonight is poised to take the lead in that movement uh, with Floridians on the front lines dealing with these issues. Uh, Chuck, your ballot measure fight has gotten some pretty steep resistance. Uh, we talked about it last time, but can you talk about that a little more, the, the, uh, the legislation that was passed in, in, in reaction to the fact that you had put this on the ballot and now the ongoing litigation that you, your group filed against it. Like just, just lay a little bit of context for what's going on beyond just election night tonight. Sure, we proposed this as an amendment to the Orange County Charter back in June of 2019. And shortly after it was proposed, uh, a legislator at the behest of the Florida Farm Bureau introduced a bill to preempt rights of nature in the state of Florida. Uh, that bill was uh, going being debated as we were developing this measure. And uh, they, they were unable to get uh, the, the right number of votes in the Senate, so they stuck it into a 111-page bill at the very last week of the legislative session uh, into a bill called the Clean Waterways Act. And it passed in that bill, tucked away as one paragraph in the 111 pages. So uh, what we see now from this vote, and this, uh, you know, Steve, we talked before about this, 89% uh, far and away exceeds my wildest expectations as far as the, uh, the winning percentage here uh, to win 89% to 11. It's clear that the citizens of Orange County, and for that matter, the citizens of Florida, because there's nothing peculiar about the Orange County. If we were to put this in any county, it would probably pass by the same uh, measure. That the, the, the legislature needs to go back next session and they need to repeal that, that, that uh, provision that preempts rights of nature in the state of Florida. And I, I'll just say this, Steve, you know, the, the, the legislators who are in that session, anybody who uh, was elected with more than 89% of the vote, they, they probably shouldn't pay attention to this, but anyone who is elected with less than 89% really need to pay attention to the citizens of uh, Florida. Thank, yeah, thanks for that, Chuck. And, and uh, Dwayne, if you, if you don't mind uh, to play the clip, I want to just show viewers who, who some of the interests were behind uh, what we're talking about here. According to a Real News review of committee hearing documents, the legislation received lobbying support from the Farm Bureau and Agricultural Coalition, Chamber of Commerce, and Home Builders Association. Here is Representative Blaze Ingoglio, the former chair of the Florida Republican Party and bill author, at a February 12th hearing speaking on behalf of the law. Issuing permits may be nearly impossible with this heightened standard of review, and the challenges to the issuance of these permits would much would be much harder to defend. This will be chaos and will damage our tremendous economy. So, Thomas, I guess um, this is probably an argument that you hear a lot in these fights across the country and maybe even around the world, and it's probably the paradigm through which the fight is going to take place after Election Day in the legal arena and in the broader political arena. I guess, can you... So sort of respond to that clip of that uh, Republican legislator saying, I think we have about two minutes left, but I definitely wanted to put this to you. Yeah, it's the templated attack that they run on these uh, rights of nature laws. But uh, as someone in New Hampshire once said, you know, there ain't no jobs unless there's clean water. <laughs> I mean, there's no, it's a, it's a baseline standard uh, that you have to have clean water. And the only way to have clean water is to recognize that ecosystems like the Wakaiba and Econlakachi rivers uh, have rights as well, that people can actually step into court to defend those rights. And so it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before. It's uh, 
you know, it's it's just the, the it's in their toolbox and that's what they pull out. But uh, you know, an orange hasn't been successful, uh, and uh, with a resounding vote, uh, won't be successful in other places in Florida as well. I think. Well, um, yeah, just one maybe, maybe a, a last uh, quick question for you for uh, a prediction from Chuck. Um, how are things looking in Florida to you for the broader presidential election? I know that's not the main thing we're talking about, but just to close things out, a quick prediction of how are things are going, or maybe even how are things going in Orange County? Anything you want to say quickly? Well, this is a very uh, split state, and it has been for several elections. Uh, you know, I think it's it's going to come down to, to maybe a few thousand votes one way or the other. Uh, I, I would, I would uh, probably say that uh, Biden will eventually win Florida after all the votes are, are calculated. But I, I would like to add this, Steve, that at uh, 89%, I, I probably have said that too often, but this is a, a, a nonpartisan, bipartisan issue, uh, the right to clean water. I mean, it's nice to see an issue that transcends uh, partisan politics. And, and you know, the right to clean water today has uh, exerted itself in the public domain of Florida as being what the voters of Florida want. Well, I wanted to thank you both for coming on tonight and um, really appreciate it. I hope to keep in touch with you moving forward on these issues at the Real News Network. Thanks again. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve.